For our mindfulness segment, uh, I actually wanted to knit while I did this, but apparently I won't. <laughs> um, apparently I will just, I'll hold my knitting while I do this. So if you guys don't already have um, your knitting or crochet or your project with you, then um, you don't have to have it with you while you do this practice, but it could be nice to. Um, I anticipate a lot of people who are watching are probably crafting while they're watching slash listening. So, um, but you don't have to have your project there with you if to do this practice. Um, so this is a, um, I didn't make this up. This is a, uh, practice that has like a long tradition. Um, off the top of my head, I am not remembering where this particular practice originates, it probably comes from more than one place and more than one tradition. So um, it might be hard to pinpoint exactly where it comes from, but um, this is a, it is a, a gratitude practice. It's, it's gratitude through mindfulness. And what we are doing is we are, um, you could do this with anything in life, but in this case, we're doing it with an object and the object is our yarn or our project that we're making and we're practicing mindfulness around how this came to be um, and gratitude for all of the aspects or steps or parts of this object's like life that brought it here to us now and um, yeah and it's just a very Kind of holistic gratitude sort of um so i'm just going to lead us through a little bit of that for today uh this is not the only way to do this practice um so if you are doing it on your own with either your crafting or other areas in life you can you can make it as specific or as broad in general as you want to i'm going to be fairly specific but you can get even more specific than i'm going to be um, and I'm just going to take us through the journey of how this object came to be. Um, and I think that probably sounds a little vague, but it'll make so much more sense as I am guiding us through it. So, um, as you have your knitted or crocheted or crafted object with you, um, or the materials, um, yeah. Take a few moments and join me for this a mindful gratitude practice. So as I, and I will uh, talk from the perspective of my project I have in front of me. So as I gaze upon my project, I just want to take a moment and really, really look at it, really absorb all the little details, the colors, the way that the light hits it, the way that little shadows are maybe made by the angle the light's coming in. Maybe I can see the plies of the yarn, the twist angle of the yarn. I see little fuzzy bits of Surrey alpaca on mine. The colors, maybe you feel the textures. And as I am noticing, really noticing the sweater that's coming into shape and the yarn that is going into making it, I think back to where this yarn came from. And I am reaching back pretty far, back to the sheep and the alpacas. And I imagine them in their fields, grazing. I imagine each little foot or hoof print in the soil as they slowly amble through their fields, eating grass. And I feel very grateful for those sheep and those alpacas. for creating this beautiful fiber. 
And I feel grateful too to the grass that they're eating. I'm grateful to that grass for nourishing them and keeping them healthy. I'm grateful for the soil that provides the nutrients to that grass. Grateful to the sun that provides light so the grass can grow into the rain that waters that grass. The rain that fills the streams or the pond or the troughs that also water those alpacas and sheep as they need to drink as well. And I'm grateful to the sky for housing the sun and the rain and the clouds. And I'm grateful too for the shepherd or for the farmer that takes care of those alpacas and those sheep. And I wish them well. I hope that they are happy and well and that they're taking care of themselves as they take good care of their sheep and their alpaca friends. And I'm grateful to them. I'm grateful to the shearers that shear the fleece and um, yeah, the wool from those fiber animals, those fiber friends. They shear them with great care, trying to take care of the animal, but also to give us good cuts of fiber so that they can be sent to the mills. And I'm grateful for the mills that spin those fibers or to the hand spinners that spin our fiber. In this case, for me, this was mill spun. And so I'm grateful for all of the hands of the people who work at that mill who spun this fiber for me. I'm grateful to the truck drivers that transported the fiber from the mills to the dyers. I'm very grateful to the beautiful indie dyers, particularly who dyed this yarn, one that was dyed especially for me for this sweater. I'm particularly grateful to those indie dyers as um, falling leaf fibers uh, particularly put a lot of care into dyeing this yarn for me. I'm grateful to those who make yarn dyes. And I'm grateful to the, again, the truck drivers that transported this dyed yarn to the shops that I purchased it from, um, either the Etsy shop or the brick and mortar shop from which I bought it. I am grateful to Etsy for allowing us to have access to these beautiful things. I'm grateful to the, all of the local yarn shops, and particularly the local yarn shop where I got my um, Stella Luna fiber for my Surrey alpaca silk. I'm grateful to those shop owners. I'm grateful to the landlords for providing the shops for them to be able to sell us these beautiful things. I'm grateful for my high high sharps, my needles. These are beautiful, wonderful, glorious needles that are a dream to work with. I'm grateful for them. And I think maybe lastly, um, just to uh, kind of wrap up this practice for today, I'll be grateful to um, my hands as well. I'm grateful that I have hands that work, that are nimble, um, that sometimes hurt. I try to take care of them when they do so that I am being a good steward of my hands and my body. Um, but I'm very grateful to them and for all that they do uh, because the works of my hands helped create this. But actually, I think before I end, I will too be thankful for our wonderful, beautiful designers. For without Melody Hoffman, I would not have this beautiful tulip jumper to create. My hands would be fumbling more. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for the designer 
as well. And I'm just, and I'm grateful to Ravelry for allowing so much good access, good access to designers um, and ways to store our designs in the online libraries and all of that sort of thing. Um, so I'll end the practice there. So if you're following along, maybe just kind of maybe looking around you, maybe just taking stock of how you feel or um, maybe if you're needing anything at the moment to take care of yourself. But that is uh, our mindfulness practice today. It is a, again, a mindful gratitude practice that has a pretty long tradition. Um, and that's just one way to do it. I got fairly specific, but you can get even more specific with it. I've done this practice before where I think about uh, uh, the individual like cells within <laughs> the blades of grass and the photosynthesis that's taking place. And I think about that photosynthesis process. And, um, you know, you could think about the combs. Uh, I didn't even get into like the, the processing of the fiber where you clean it and the, um, yeah. So much goes into this uh, beyond just us. Um, I do think it's good to practice gratitude for ourselves um, because I think we forget that sometimes. Um, but yeah, so much goes into it. Past the, the beautiful indie dyers, past the beautiful yarn, even past the beautiful fiber animals. Um, everything is connected. We are all connected and I'm grateful for us all. So yeah, I think that'll be our practice for today. <laughs>